Hi everybody, welcome back to Bible in a Year. My name is Natalie and today we are on day 213. Welcome to the channel. I am so happy that you're here today. We are going to be finishing the book of Judges today by reading Judges chapter 21 and then we'll read Jeremiah chapter 29, Colossians chapter 2, and then we're going to close out the day with Psalm 111. So let's finish up Judges. This is Judges chapter 21. Now the men of Israel had sworn in Mizpah, saying, None of us will give his daughter to Benjamin as a wife. The people came to Bethel and sat there until evening before God and lifted up their voices and wept severely. They said, Yahweh, the God of Israel, why has this happened in Israel that there should be one tribe lacking in Israel today? On the next day, the people rose early and built an altar there and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. The children of Israel said, Who is there among all the tribes of Israel who didn't come up in the assembly to Yahweh? For they had made a great oath concerning him who didn't come up to Yahweh to Mizpah, saying, he shall surely be put to death. The children of Israel grieved for Benjamin their brother and said, There is one tribe cut off from Israel today. How shall we provide wives for those who remain, since we have sworn by Yahweh that we will not give them of our daughters to wives? They said, What one is there of the tribes of Israel who didn't come up to Yahweh to Mizpah? Therefore, no one came from Jabesh Gilead to the camp to the assembly. For when the people were counted, behold, there were none of the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead there. The congregation sent 12,000 of the most valiant men there and commanded them, saying, Go and strike the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead with the edge of the sword, with the women and the little ones. This is the thing that you shall do. You shall utterly destroy every male and every woman who has lain with a man. They found among the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead four hundred young virgins who had not known man by lying with him, and they brought them to the camp to Shiloh, which is in the land of Canaan. The whole congregation sent and spoke to the children of Benjamin who were in the rock of Ramon and proclaimed peace to them. Benjamin returned at that time, and they gave them the women who they had saved alive of the women of Jabesh Gilead. There still weren't enough for them. The people grieved for Benjamin because Yahweh had made a breach in the tribes of Israel. Then the elders of the congregation said, How shall we provide wives for those who remain since the women are destroyed out of Benjamin? They said, there must be an inheritance for those who are escaped of Benjamin that a tribe not be blotted out from Israel. However, we may not give them wives of our daughters, for the children of Israel had sworn, saying, Cursed is he who gives a wife to Benjamin. They said, Behold, there is a feast of Yahweh from year to year in Shiloh, which is on the north of Bethel on the east side of the highway that goes up from Bethel to Shechem and on the south of Labona. They commanded the children of Benjamin, saying, Go and lie in wait in the vineyards, and see and behold, if the daughters of Shiloh come out to dance in the dances, then come out of the vineyards, and each man catch his wife of the daughters of Shiloh, and go to the land of Benjamin. It shall be, when their fathers of their brothers come to complain to us, that we will say to them, Grant them graciously to us, because we didn't take for each man his wife in battle, neither did you give them to them. Otherwise, you would now be guilty. The children of Benjamin did so, and took wives for themselves according to their number of those who danced, whom they carried off. They went and returned to their inheritance, built the cities, and lived in them. The children of Israel departed from there at that time, every man to his tribe and to his family, and they each went out from there to his own inheritance. 
In those days, there was no king in Israel. Everyone did that which was right in his own eyes. Clearly. Alrighty, moving into Jeremiah chapter 29. Now these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem to the residue of the elders of the captivity and to the priests, to the prophets, and to all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. After Jeconiah, Jeconiah the king, the queen mother, the eunuchs, the princes of Judah, and Jerusalem, the craftsmen and the smiths had departed from Jerusalem. By the hand of El, El, Elisa, the son of Shaphan, and Gamariah, the son of Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent to Babylon, to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. It said, Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says to all the captives whom I have caused to be carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses and dwell in them, plant gardens and eat their fruit, take wives and father sons and daughters, take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands that they may bear sons and daughters, multiply there and don't be diminished. Seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captive, and pray to Yahweh for it, for in its peace you will have peace. For Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, Don't let your prophets who are among you and your diviners deceive you. Don't listen to your dreams which you cause to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely to you in my name. I have not sent them, says Yahweh. For Yahweh says, after seventy years, are, uh, after seventy years are accomplished for Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good to- word towards you, in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says Yahweh, thoughts of peace, and not of evil, to give you hope and a future. You shall call on me. And you shall go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You shall seek me and find me when you search for me with your whole heart. I will be found by you, says Yahweh, and I will return again your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, says Yahweh. I will bring you again to the place from where I caused you to be carried away captive. Because you have said, Yahweh has raised us up prophets in Babylon. Yahweh was concerning the king who sits on David's throne and concerning all the people who dwell in this city, your brothers who haven't gone with you into captivity. Yahweh of armies says, Behold, I will send on them the sword, the famine, and the pestilence, and will make them like rotten figs that can't be eaten. They are so bad. I will pursue after them with the sword, with the famine, and with the pestilence, and will deliver them to be tossed back and forth among all the kingdoms of the earth, to be an object of horror, an astonishment, a hissing, and a reproach among all the nations where I have driven them, because they have not listened to my words, says Yahweh with which I sent to them my servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them. But you would not hear, says Yahweh. Hear therefore Yahweh's word, all you captives whom I have sent away from Jerusalem to Babylon. Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel says concerning Ahab, the son of Koliah, and concerning Zedekiah, the son of Messiah, who prophesy a lie to you in my name. 
Behold, I will deliver them into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he will kill them before your eyes. A curse will be taken up about them by all the captives of Judah who are in Babylon, saying, Yahweh, make you like Zedekiah and like Ahab, whom the king of Babylon roasted in the fire, because they have done foolish things in Israel and have committed adultery with their neighbors' wives and have spoken words in my name falsely, which I didn't command them. I am he who knows and am witness, says Yahweh. Concerning Shemaiah, the Nehelamite, you shall speak, saying, Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, Because you have sent letters in your own name to all the people who are at Jerusalem, and to Zephaniah, the son of Messiah, the priest, and to all the priests, saying, Yahweh has made you priests in the place of Jehoiada, the priest, that there may be officers in Yahweh's house. For every man who is crazy and makes himself a prophet, that you should put him in the stocks and in shackles. Now therefore, why have you not rebuked Jeremiah of Anathoth, who makes himself a prophet to you? Because he has sent to us in Babylon, saying, The captivity is long. Build houses and dwell in them. Plant gardens and eat their fruit. Zephaniah, the priest, read this letter in the hearing of Jeremiah the prophet. Then Yahweh's word came to Jeremiah, saying, Send to all the captives, saying, Yahweh says concerning Shemaiah, the Nehalamite, Because Shemaiah has prophesied to you, and I didn't send him, And he has caused you to trust in a lie. Therefore Yahweh says, Behold, I will punish Shemaiah the Nehalamite and his offspring. He will not have a man to dwell among this people. He won't see the good that I will do to my people, says Yahweh, because he has spoken rebellion against Yahweh. Can I go back? For a second, this is uh, Jeremiah 29, verse 11. And while I know this is history and that this is God speaking, but it could very well be current times and something to hold on to. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says Yahweh. Thoughts of peace and not evil to give you hope and a future. You shall call on me and you shall go and pray to me and I will listen to you. You shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I don't think God has changed. I think he is still that very same God who spoke then, and I believe he speaks those words now. Okay, uh, Colossians chapter 2. This is Paul uh, still writing his letter. For I desire to have you know how greatly I struggle for you and for those at La, la, mm, this is so hard for me to say. La Odyssea. And for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts may be comforted, that being knit together in love and gaining all riches of the full assurance of understanding, that they may know the mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ, in whom all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden. Now I say this, that no one may delude you with persuasiveness of speech. For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in spirit, 
rejoicing in seeing your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As therefore you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, even as you were taught, abounding in it in thanksgiving. Be careful that you don't let anyone rob you through his philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men, after the elemental spirits of the world, and not after Christ. For in him all the fullness of the deity dwells bodily, and in him you are made full, who is the head of all principality and power. In him you were also circumcised with a circumcision not made with hands, in the putting off of the body of the sins of the flesh, in the circumcision of Christ having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. You were dead through your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh. He made you alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses, wiping out the handwriting in ordinances which was against us. He has taken it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Having stripped the principalities and the powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no one therefore judge you in eating or drinking or with respect to a feast day or a new moon or a Sabbath day, which, uh, which are a shadow of the things to come but the body is Christ's. Let no one rob you of your prize by self-abasement and worshiping of the angels, dwelling in the things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind and not holding firmly to the head, from whom all the body, being supplied and knit together through the joints and ligaments, grows with God's growth. If you died with Christ from the elemental spirits of the world, <clears throat> why, as though living in the world, do you subject yourselves to ordinances? Let me read that again. If you died with Christ from the elemental spirits of the world, why, as though living in the world, do you subject yourselves to ordinances don't handle nor taste nor touch all of which perish according to the precepts of the doctrines of men these things indeed appear like wisdom in self-imposed worship humility and severity to the body but aren't of any value against the indulgence of the flesh. <laughs> there you have it. It does not matter. Now, while it doesn't matter, I will say that um, there are times where, um, oh, what's a good example? There are times where, okay, so what he's saying here, let me just go back to make it fluid here. Um, why, as though living in the world, do you subject yourselves to ordinances? Don't handle, nor taste, nor touch. So with this, let's just bring it to a spiritual level, all right? Um, during Lent, I think, that is the time period that we are not supposed to be eating, um, what's that that makes it right? Yeast. Okay, so I think that's the time period. And so if we are living in Christ, there, I'm just using that one rule as an example. Um, I'm doing this poorly, but just one rule <laughs> as an example. 
Paul is basically saying, why are you still bound by these ordinances and rules? If Christ came and you chose to believe in Christ and you chose to believe in this new covenant, why would you be bound to not eating yeast during Lent? Why would you give up anything during Lent? That's a law. It's an ordinance. Why would you do any of these ordinances if you are growing your relationship in Christ? Now, I will say that there is something to be said about going back and following some of the ordinances. Um, Shall we say traditions? It kind of, um, I don't know, solidifies, solidifies the experience of the time. I hope I explained that properly. <laughs> My brain is melting. <laughs> okay, um, Psalm 111. Let's close it out, folks. Praise Yah. I will give thanks to Yahweh with my whole heart in the counsel of the upright and in the congregation. Yahweh's works are great, pondered by all those who delight in them. His work is in is honor and majesty. His righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonderful works to be remembered. Yahweh is gracious and merciful. He has given food to those who fear him. He always remembers his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are truth and justice. All his precepts are sure. They are established forever and ever. They are done in truth and uprightness. He has sent redemption to his people. He has ordained his covenant forever. His name is holy and awesome. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom. All those who do his work have a good understanding. His praise endures forevermore. Yes, it does. Thank you so much, you guys, for stopping by. I'm sorry about the little debacle in Colossians. I just wanted to be able to make that point. I'm not certain if I did it very well, but I sure hope the uh, elementary portion of it um, was spoken. (laughs) So um, please come back for tomorrow, which is going to be day 213. We finished Judges. Judges was rough. Um... Let's see what is next after Judges. <gasps> Ruth! Oh, you got to come back. Yes, definitely come back tomorrow. And they're not breaking up the chapters. Ruth is just chapter one, two, three, four. So four days of Ruth. Oh, you're going to love it. So uh, definitely come on back for that. Have a fantastic day, everybody. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye.